US Coast Guard's Advanced Command, Control, and Direction Finding Communication System. This system was created to better locate mariners in distress and also save lives. By incorporating state-of-the-art technology, General Dynamics' Rescue 21 system enables the U.S. Coast Guard to execute search and rescue missions with far greater agility and efficiency. The system combines manned command centers connected to remote fixed facilities along the Pacific, Atlantic, and Gulf Coasts of the continental United States. Each remote fixed facility includes a DF antenna or direction finding antenna mounted on a radio tower to aid in direction finding efforts from radio calls made from sea. After meeting with GDMS, we set uh, sponsor requirements with them. One of them being that the system had to be transported by a drone, a specific drone, a DGI Maverick. Second, we needed to transmit signals at very high frequencies at specific marine time channels. For the third requirement, the system shall be able to log positional and time data for each transmission for the duration of the flight. Okay. Our project has quite a big reliance on post-processing software. Now looking back at our module itself, we have an onboard GPS that keeps track of time for each signal transmission, but we also needed to keep track of the positioning itself um, through latitude and longitude. We could have used the GPS data from the module, however, we realized that it was actually three to six feet less accurate than the drone's onboard GPS. Therefore, we decided to create a separate piece of post-processing software to mitigate this issue entirely. Um, and this post-processing software combined the best of both worlds by allowing us to have accurate positional data while also providing a time source or clock to record when we were actually emitting signals from the module. Our software is very simple. The user imports both of the log files from the module itself and from the drone um, into our software. Then all they would do is click the process data button and what that does is it will process the data, um, sync all of the positional data with the time data um, as well as the signal emission data um, and bring it all together into one calibration file. And this calibration file is then given to the DF tower to finish the uh, direction finding calibration. Going deep into our electronic system, we considered multiple electronic design solutions to meet our goals. Of course, a restriction we faced throughout designing our electronic system were the size and weight limitations. This greatly limited us to creating the most compact and lightweight solution we can fathom. The combination of our ideas and designs led to us using small modular integrated circuit boards. These integrated circuit boards would work in tandem with an Arduino microcontroller to create an overall embedded system that would meet all our requirements. Component-wise, we primarily needed to include wireless communication capabilities to send the calibration signals to the DF towers. Our design uses a modular integrated circuit board called the Hamshield Mini. The Hamshield Mini was created to be used by radio amateurs and can be operated via Arduino microcontroller. Uh, overall, it serves all our radio transmission needs and requirements. Secondly, we needed a mechanism in place to keep track of transmission data as well as the time of each calibration transmission. Thus, we came up with using a simple GPS logger shield available online on Adafruit. This piece of electronics is light and stacked onto Arduino boards minimizing the overall size of the test module. Its ability to communicate with GPS satellites and fetch time data serves our idea of how we implemented the calibration processes. Additionally, it also stores all data as it is a micro SD card logging device, making this an extremely practical component to include in the design. Our sponsor required that we design a module that was small enough to attach to a drone. We chose to use the DJI Mavic drone our sponsor provided us in order to stay within our budget. There are three major constraints the mechanical team considered in the design of the housing, the module dimensions and weight, and how to mount the module to the drone. With the help of SolidWorks, we designed several prototypes. Through our ConOps, we landed on a module housing with a removable lid as the best option to allow the user to access the internal components of our system, such as the SD card, which is used for post-processing. We determined that the 3D printed 
housing out of ABS would allow us for to fall under our weight requirement and also provide us stability. Through our design process, we kept an ongoing analysis to give us a reference for our system's total weight. This was helpful as we continuously added and removed components from our system. I'm going to be speaking about a few of the components that verify a few mechanical requirements within our assembly. To start off with, I'm going to be talking about a DJI drone mount, which allows for quick release from the drone and allows for access to remove it from our module housing. We originally planned to use a GoPro mount, but the GoPro mount failed to be properly incorporated. Next, I'll be speaking about internal components, heat inserts. This allows for internal component installation. We chose heat inserts over tap and die and prefabricating and threading hole, when any damage within the module housing. I'm talking about a material test that we ran on the ABS material to prove that it could withstand a hit. And in case if the drone were to fall from the air or during instrumentation of the module housing, we want to make sure that it was able to withstand any force that takes place. Our final acceptance test was conducted at General Dynamics Hayden facility in Scottsdale. We verified our sponsor's three given requirements of the system, which were having the module be transported via drone, transmitting very high frequency signals, which were received by the directional finding system, and logging time and position data during the transmission. Project. Changes and improvements to our project would involve the addition of a new drone that has a larger payload capacity than the current DJI drone provided by our sponsor. This is because it would allow for an increase in the module size and weight, as well as freedom for new or different components used inside our system. Our current system drains much of the drone's power, power and battery during flight, which requires us to use multiple batteries through an entire flight test. With the drone with a larger payload capacity, we could avoid this and complete the test in one single flight.